Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Isaiah Pierce, and this is Total Sovereign Grace Ministries. Today, we're going to open up our lesson with 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Right now in this country and across the world, there is an oversaturation of demonic doctrines being taught. America is pacing fast towards leaving the God of the Bible. America would much rather heed to the doctrines of devils. So today we're going to take a look at these doctrines of devils. The Word of God clearly prophesies that in the latter times, some will give heed to doctrines of devils, meaning doctrines from devils. Note that a physical demon ministering to people isn't required for people to follow these doctrines. Mankind hears lies propagated by Satan, and they follow them on their own. What is an example of doctrines of devils? You may be thinking in your head an ancient spell tome that has backwards Latin written all over it with a pentagram. But in reality, it's much worse than that in America. Right now in this country, one of the biggest lies that has been spread is that there is a way to heaven outside of Jesus Christ. You know, my wife and I, we were over at a friend's house one night, and I talked to the man of the house, and we began on the topic of religion and the Bible. And he told me he thought Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists alike would make it to heaven if they were good people. So I asked him, I said, do you believe that the Bible is the word of God with no errors? And he said, yes, absolutely. I said, do you believe Jesus is the son of God? He said, absolutely, yes. I said, do you believe that Jesus being God was telling the truth when he said, unless you believe on me, you will die in your sins. And do you believe Jesus when he said, no man gets to the father, but by me. And he said, yes, absolutely. I told him, you either believe one or the other. You believe Jesus Christ the man you call the Son of God, or you believe in your own self, your opinion, and the conversation stopped there. Right now, there's a war in America for your mind, for your children's mind, for the mind of everyone in this country. The war itself says Christ was good, but his death wasn't necessary because there are multiple paths to heaven. Whether they say his death was in vain or not, they're effectively saying that when they say that. They're saying thanks, but no thanks to his death. And they are deeming themselves to be the arbiter of who makes the kingdom. I know Billy Graham said there are multiple ways to heaven. I know Joel Osteen said there are multiple paths to Jesus. But the word of God says there is a singular, narrow path. Matthew seven thirteen through 14 Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their act. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Few! Does that sound like Christ is leaving the table open to universalism? Does that sound like Christ is saying there is more than one way? Well, for the slow learners, I can tell you absolutely not. Christ said, unless you believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. And that's a promise. If there's one thing that is crystal clear in this book, it is without Christ you will die in your sins. There is no getting around it. There is no universal children of God. The children of God are the born-again, blood-bought believers in Jesus Christ. Universalism is a doctrine of demons. As a matter of fact, it is the doctrine of Satan. It's the same doctrine that Satan told Eve, Have God said, hath God said, He said, he knows the minute you eat of that tree, you will be God's as he is. It seems like another path to me than the perfect one that they had for them, which was God Almighty. When given the choice, mankind will always reject Jesus Christ and choose a man-made, satanic-inspired philosophy. Satan and his battalion of demons have not stopped at the world. Satan made sure that he could pollute the church of Jesus Christ. Although I must say many of these churches today resemble nothing of Christ but in name. Satan has gotten a hold of a lot of these churches. As a matter of fact, and some, he may be sitting in the front row. I don't want you to be mistaken. I'm not saying that your church is satanic based on the pastor's interpretation about the book of Revelation or the book of Daniel. 
But when your preacher starts discounting the Word of God and says that homosexuality, abortion, transgenderism is all okay, you are listening to the doctrine of demons, the doctrine of devils. You are listening to a doctrine that is totally contrary to what the Word of God says and by very nature is demonic and wicked. Another doctrine of demons is the prosperity gospel, the doctrine that God will make you rich if you simply follow Him, that God will make your life full of wealth, and abundance if all you do is follow Him. Make no mistake, the God of the universe has the power and the ability to make you rich and wealthy. But the God of the Bible told us that we would endure trials and tribulations. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. Carry your cross. He never said that this life would be easy. What makes the prosperity gospel so dangerous is that people begin to believe they are cursed by God based on whether or not they were healed or not. Whether or not they're rich or not determines whether or not they're blessed by God or not. This gospel takes all the emphasis off Christ Jesus and His work on the cross to redeem us from our sins and puts it into materialism. The prosperity gospel teaches that Christ died on the cross for your poverty and your physical sickness. And because of His death, you as a believer should be rich and healthy. But it doesn't stop there. The prosperity gospel contains the little God's belief that we were once gods before the fall in the garden. And because of our sin, we lost our godhood. But believing in Christ redeems your godhood. But let me be clear. Christ shares His godhood, His deity with no one, no man, no woman, no object. Another doctrine of demons that is terrorizing the minds of the children is the doctrines of evolution. Before you say that it's not a religious doctrine, don't fool yourself. It takes faith to believe that nothing exploded billions of years ago or a single particle exploded billions of years ago. After billions of years, we have a boiling broth that emerged on earth and out of that came bacteria which then reproduced and evolved over millions of years. Don't fool yourself into believing that evolution is not a doctrine of demons. The Word of God says in six days God created the heavens and the earth. That is six literal days. If you try to say it's not literal, at what point do you begin to take the Bible literally? You see, Satan always begins his campaign of wickedness in any organization with whispers. It is usually never blatant heresy and wickedness. It's all creeping gradualism. That is how America has arrived to where we are today. If the doctrines I listed here were brought into the mid-1800s, there would be a lot of people charged with blasphemy. There were too many people back then who feared the name of God, who had reverence for the name of God. And here's the bad part. It will only get worse. It will only get worse. Now, where's the light of the world in all this? Where are we at? At what point do we realize that these elections that we're holding in this country do nothing for our nation as long as we lack reverence for the Almighty God? My question to you today is, do you adhere to the Word of God? That there's only one path to heaven, and that is Jesus Christ. And that we are all broken, fallen sinners, not gods, but broken, fallen sinners. Or, will you heed to the doctrines of demons.